think you need to do. And um, normally in a real situation, a real training situation, guys would not be dropping their uh, drop tanks willy-nilly all over the place. Drop tanks are expensive, right. and squadrons only have a set number of them. Um, so yeah, we're making a 270 degree turn. So just make, I'm going to make one to the right, you make one to the left and we'll finish that turn and then we'll be facing right towards each other. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Three, two, one, and let's go. All right. Starting my turn. This is it. Bandit. F14. Seven o'clock. One mile. Hey guys. Spud Knocker here as always, and today I wanted to bring you guys a recording of a BFM training session I had with one of my patrons. I've been doing a lot of BFM training sessions with my patrons, and it's been a ton of fun, and very, very cool to see them progressing so far in their abilities in both flying the F-14 right to the edge of the envelope, and see them be go from being sitting ducks to being able to hold their own and even beat a very experienced DCS World pilot in the BFM environment. I tend to prescribe to a bit of a more old school approach and style to dogfighting techniques and I think it gets the job done far better over the more new school thinking of slow speed maneuverability and nose point ability. Because that new school of thought really just leaves you with zero altitude, zero airspeed, and no options when it comes to a real combat scenario, leaving you pretty much a sitting duck for a second jet to come and splash you right after you splash the bandit that you're after. And fights on. This is why I'm a huge, huge proponent of the F-14B and her fantastic uh, GE F-110 engines, and I feel confident in my ability to defeat anything out there in the guns-only BFM environment in the F-14B using more old-school boom and zoom and slash attack tactics. Anyway, if you'd like to participate in a dogfight training session, uh, consider becoming a patron and make sure you like and subscribe and check out my sponsor, Wild Weasel Apparel. They just released a whole bunch of new combat aviation themed merch on their site and they are definitely worth checking out for some cool gear. So thanks a lot guys and we'll see you soon. Alright, you're mine now, buddy. Yeah, it's not over just yet. <laughs> 12 o'clock low. Alright, pretty good move. Almost got a maneuver kill. Yeah, I almost maneuver killed myself also. <laughs> We're on a six. On a six, go get him. And there's a tracking gun skill. Dang it. 12 o'clock. Alright, leveling. There he is on our track. Alright. Keep going, continue, continue. Get rid of me. Oh, okay. Right. Get rid of me. Come on, light him up. Tracker is messing up as I'm trying to look. Uh oh. You need me to pause it? No, I'm, I'm good. Good reversal, good reversal. I'm not the smartest track I are in the world. He's all yours, we're on a six. Good reversal, good job. Keep keep going, Keep be unpredictable. He's on our nose. Nice job. Here. He's ours now. Alright, there's another tracking gun skill. Dang, I can't... It's like I try and pull to a certain direction and then it wants to flip out. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pause it. That much stick. Okay, I'm gonna pause it here just so that we can talk. Um, so when you say that, like, what, uh, how do you mean? Okay, so for example, I was trying to do, um, I was trying to start rolling scissors. Okay. And whenever I rolled back out, it started rocking like crazy, even though I was going like 350 knots. Okay. And the AOA started increasing like uh, a lot. Right? Okay. The buffeting, heavy uh, buffeting. Okay. Um. Yeah, that will happen. Do you do you have rudder pedals? 
Yeah, I use rotors. Okay, so make sure that when you're making those, when you have any AOA on the jet at all, and you want to roll the jet, you need to make sure that you have that you roll the jet with your rudder pedals. Um, now, if you want to make you know a nice smooth roll, you can just use rudder pedals. But if you really want to snap the jet um, over in a roll, um, say you want to make you know a quick ninety degree roll so that you can pull uh, and, and try and get me into a scissors or something like that, you want to give both um, rudder deflection and stick deflection in that same direction. So that way you can snap the jet over as quickly as possible. And then when you want to stop that roll, you need to center both the rudder and the stick at the same time. It sounds like you're maybe getting a little bit of adverse yaw. And so to counteract that adverse yaw is when we, we really need to make sure we're good on our rudder pedals. Um, any kind of AOA on the jet at all. So if your stick is pulled back at all, you're going to need rudders in order to actually turn the jet or roll the jet, I mean. Okay. Yep. Um, so when you're in a fight like this, it's really, really easy to um, get that adrenaline pumping and forget about all the fundamentals of flying the Tomcat in terms of making sure that you're rolling the jet with the rudder pedals, all these kinds of things. And I'm even guilty of it at times. And I have to like take a, like a step back and say, okay, fly the jet, fly the jet, fly the jet. So if you got to fly the jet first before you can fight the jet, right? So just make sure that you've got and are using those fundamentals for the F-14 before you worry about the uh, opponent. Got it. All right, so um, why don't we go ahead and reset the fight. So just go back to the select roll page, uh, hit go back to spectator and hop back into your jet. Okay. All right, cool. All righty, so we'll go ahead and do that again. Um, so good job on pretty much everything. You, you can really move the jet around really well. It's just kind of a uh, fine-tuning things for the most part, it seems like, right? Uh, just some quick things I need to work on. I self-evaluated myself a bit during the fight. Yeah. I need to figure out how can I get you to overshoot without uh -huh. getting myself to stall out because that was yeah. pretty so kind of working whenever i was doing the reversals but it yeah weren't overshooting enough yeah so there's a couple things that you can think about there you've got i'm i'm a pretty darn good tomcat pilot and i'm not saying that just to toot my own I know, horn I know. here um, I'm just saying this just so that you know and so there's three different when you're on someone's tail There's three different ways you can chase them. You can pull a lead pursuit a boresight pursuit and a lagging pursuit And a lot of times I go for the lagging pursuit and that means that I'm staying back a little bit um, and Maybe usually you're somewhere up around my canopy rail like right above my center mirror and that way I can keep an eye on you. I'm behind you. I'm on your six. But basically what I'm doing is, you know, I'm letting you tire yourself out. You're trying to do all these crazy maneuvers to get me off your tail. I'm back a little bit farther than maybe, you know, full on guns range. So that way I can see what you're doing. I can predict what you're doing and I can react to what you're doing rather than just trying to keep you inside my pipper the entire time. I wait for a moment where you're weak, you've expended your energy in a crazy maneuver or something like that. Then I go in and put the pipper on you and kill you. Um, a boresight pursuit is where you're just trying to keep the gun sight on your opponent the entire time. And that works, but usually you don't have enough time to react to what your opponent is doing. Um, and then I also you also have what's called a leading pursuit where the opponent actually falls down underneath your windscreen is somewhere underneath your nose where you can't see them because of the nose and the cockpit. Um, and that is great if you need to cut someone off in a corner, but you really have to think hard as to where they are mentally plot where they're going to be so that you don't accidentally run into them or something like that, because running into them defeats the purpose. You've killed yourself, right? So, um, so think about that so that it, so that when you do get on my tail, you, it's harder for me to shake you. Um, but that's what I'm doing with you. So 
to counteract that, you just got to switch up the equation 100 um, percent, you know, get gain a whole bunch of energy and then go up over the top or something of that nature in order to just switch up and remix the entire equation of the fight rather than just simply trying to turn into a drag a drag race with guns where you're just trying to outrun me the whole time. Um, when it comes to trying to get someone to overshoot, like I said before, if you're against an, F8, an F-18, don't even try that because they will get you every single time because that's what an F-18 is designed to do, is to design to be slow and maneuverable, uh, whereas an F-14 is designed to be fast and powerful. So that's kind of the idea there. Um, with an F-14, you could definitely get me to overshoot. Um, but uh, against an F-18 like you were against Legend, it's never going to happen. All right. All right. So let's that makes go. Sense. Yep. So let's go ahead and do it again. Uh, this time we'll go ahead and make a 270 degree turn again, just like we did before. We'll go into the merge. Once we hit the merge, I'll call fights on and we'll start the fight. All right. All right. All right. Three, two, one, and here we go. Turn in my. Start my turn. Let's do this. There's a bandit, Tomcat, seven o'clock, two miles. Uh, it seems like you're also using the uh, air combat mode, so the radar to your advantage. So that's really good. Keep that up for sure. Six o'clock. Yep. Thanks. All right, coming on back around. Yep, turning back around. Yep, and I'm heading straight into you now. Also, is it normal when to release the rudders in the level that you should yaw of it? Uh, sorry, say that again? Said, is it normal when you roll out of a turn using rudder that it should yaw of it? Um, well, that sounds like maybe you're releasing all of the rudder input all at once. Once, um, oh, yeah. when you're flying the Tomcat, it's all about being smooth. Be smooth with the stick, be smooth with the rudders, be smooth with the throttle. Um, so instead of just letting all that rudder out all at once, unless you need to make you know a real quick snap kind of a turn or a roll, um, you want to just, you know, gent not gently is probably the wrong word, but smoothly let that rudder input out. So that way you don't get into a, a Dutch roll or an adverse yaw kind of situation um, once you take out all that rudder input. That makes sense, because I've kind of been manhandling it a lot. Yeah, uh, Tomcat does not react well to manhandling, so she's a delicate creature, and she'll treat you well if you treat her delicately. So uh, she's a powerful jet, but you just got to be very smooth and very gentle with the controls. So, got it. All right. Oh, a second thing. Do you have any curves on your stick and or rudder? I have 15 degrees and two dead zone on both X and Y, and then I have it on the rudder. Okay, do you have a dead zone on your rudders? Yeah, uh, 3%. Okay, um, for the dead zone, maybe want to try extending that a little bit. I have 10 for mine, and so that way maybe when you're being a little bit violent with your rudder movements, you may be accidentally swinging the other way a little bit on your rudder pedals, because they're, you know, they're flight simulator rudder pedals, they're not real airplane rudder pedals. And so that may be the cause of your um, opposite rudder at the end of a roll kind of thing. So, okay. Oh. Are you going to change that now, or do you want to just do the fight? Uh, I changed it so we can try it at the beginning of this fight. All right, sweet. Uh, let me know when you're ready. Uh, ready. Okay, three, two, one, and let's go. And... Fight's on. Five o'clock. Two 
o'clock low. Spike, 11 o'clock. 12 o'clock low. Uh, I'm guessing that would have been a snapshot. Yep. If I flash across your screen, that, that could have been. Uh, Head-on snapshots don't usually work out as well as you want them to. Yeah, that's why I didn't call it. And you really got to be careful with that because if you concentrate too much on getting a head-on snapshot, you may accidentally run into your opponent. Eight o'clock. Uh, no joy. Yeah. All right, I've got you. I'll lock you up to give you an indication here. Okay, I see ya. So Jester, when you're just flying straight and level, he gives some weird indications of things, but in a dogfight, I find that Jester's callouts for bandits and friendlies are almost always spot on. So you can really rely on Jester and having that second guy in the cockpit to really, really help you out. Alright, pull hard, pull hard, pull hard. Good job, good job. Keeping me off your tail. Alright, pull hard, pull hard, pull hard. 12 o'clock. Good job. Extend, extend, extend. 5 o'clock. Alright, pull hard left. Hard left, hard left. 2 o'clock. Good job, good job. Full burners, full burners. Extend, extend, extend. Get, regain some energy. Eight o'clock high. Ten o'clock. Good job. He's coming left. Good job, resetting the fight. Honestly, I think more about trying to get on the enemy six rather than trying to gain my own energy back. Yeah, that so be, uh... yeah, so that's called target fixation. You don't want that. Uh, you don't want Buck Fever to say, "Oh, I gotta kill him right now, right now, right now." You want to be the the skillful hunter. You know, you want to wait until your prey is. Um, in your sights and you have a good shot on them rather than just trying to force a good shot. If that makes sense. It does. Alright, good job. And that's incredibly important in the Tomcat. In the Hornet you can kind of fudge it a bit and just get target fixation and the FCS will do its thing and help you out. But in the Tomcat that just is not an option. Good job, good job. Pull hard left, hard left, hard left. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Alright, reverse it, reverse it, watch the ground, Re watch the ground. Work the throttles. I'm trying to pull in this thing, I'm trying to keep it within the... Oh, watch the ground. Uh, oh, it, watch I the ground. It, I got it, don't worry, I got it. Nice, nice. That was a close one. 12 o'clock low. All right. Nine o'clock. Getting better. Getting better. I'm trying to change my uh, mentality. Yeah. Mid fight. You gotta be a dynamic thinker, right? You gotta be able to change things up. There you go. Go go behind the hill. Awesome. Alright, I'm going into that lag pursuit now, so this would be a good time to extend, build up a ton of energy, and maybe go up over the top. Good job. He's right in front of you. Uh, right. This is a part where I'd be worried about because 
by then they'd probably be able to get a solution. No, nope. if the Hornet. They were trying to go for me. If you can outrun the Hornet and then um, pull up into the vertical, the Hornet can't follow you. It can follow you the first bit, but then eventually he will stall out. You're right behind him, closing. The key here is pulling hard in that vertical loop, but not too hard. You don't want to make the loop too small because then you'll play right into the hands of the Hornet. But if you extend the loop and make the loop nice and big and you stay nice He's and right fast, you'll be able to outrun and lose that Hornet. Because most Hornet pilots, especially in DCS, will just yank that stick around and kill their energy away super quickly because the FCS will let you bleed that energy very, very fast. Good job. He's dead ahead, man. You're right behind him. Okay. On a six, keep it up. Pull hard, pull hard. He's on a 12 sharp. Uh, oh, now it's getting to that slow speed. Yep, yep. We're on a six. Keep Time moving, keep being unpredictable. So that way, I can't get a clean gun shot on you. sure I'd be dead by now but yeah yeah you're pretty much out of energy and out of airspeed and ideas right now so I pretty much have you dead to rights so let's go ahead and reset it but this time instead of starting from a neutral position I'm gonna go ahead and let you onto my six uh, right off the bat and that way you can practice a uh, you know keeping a good pursuit going So I'm going to go back to spectators and back to my jet. Already in. Awesome. All right, let me check what time it is. Cool, I got 20 minutes. All right, so um, for this one, instead of us doing a 270 degree turn, you know, and coming in from a neutral uh, merge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn right, and you go ahead and turn right and get right onto my tail. Um, and then we will go, uh, you'll try and stay on my tail as long as you can, and I'll try and shake you as best I can. Okay. Yep, okay. So, we'll go ahead and get it started in three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to start my turn right now. There you go. Stay on my tail. Let's do this. We've got a bandit, Tomcat, six o'clock high, one mile. There he is. Stay on my tail. Let's turn the tide, man. Stay on my tail. Nope. Shoot, I killed myself. Three o'clock high. Haha, that works, I guess. If that were a hornet though, I would have been gon gonzo. There he is, he's five o'clock high. Come on down, come get on my tail again. We need to All right. Four o'clock high. He's, he's coming left. Good job, good job. Six o'clock high. All right, I'll turn him. Five 
5 o'clock high. Six o'clock. Tracking. Good job. Shit, he's on our six. Still on my six. Nice Three job. Job. Get him off our back. Coming right. He's behind us. Shake him. Shit, get rid of him. He's right behind us. Watch it. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Alright, where'd he go? There he is. He's on our six. I'm guessing you were using flaps there? Nope. No flaps. Oh, because I don't know why I put such high away. We need to lose anyway. it. What do you mean? I was, um, fuming. Um, trying to pull out of that loop. Yeah. It's about knowing how far you can push it without losing it. safe just barely that's good all right radar altimeter I know two o'clock oh shit <laughs> that was close five o'clock And he's back on my tail again. Yeah, once somebody's saddled on your tail in a Tomcat, it's hard to get them off. Especially in there if they're in another Tomcat, just because we have the same turning radius, the same uh, engine performance, everything.
Nine o'clock low. Five o'clock high. Yeah, good job not letting me uh, throw you out front. Thank you. He's on our six. Let's get rid of him. Six o'clock low. Shit, he's on our six. Do some of that pilot shit. All right, good job. So I think I think you've got the idea of how to stay on someone's tail really well. So for this next one, why don't I go ahead and hop into a Hornet and uh, let's see if you can play to your strengths and uh, downplay mine and uh, get me that way. Okay. Select roll, F18. So for this one, we'll go ahead and uh, do that same 270 degree turn and start from a 100% um, neutral uh, perspective. Sound good? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and three, two, one, go. And we'll go, oh, rock. Okay, you're turning the right direction, sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. Alright, remember, stay fast, stay high. Alright, gotcha. Yep, I've got gotcha. you. Coming towards the merge. And fight's on. Oh shit, I lost you. There you are. I can say the same. I cannot say that though. I'm down low. Well, I'm lower than you. I'm not down low, but I'm lower than you. Oh, I'm okay, coming through your five o'clock. Come right, come right, turn right. Don't let me on your six. They always starting to pick up there a lot, even. Yep, it will. The faster you are, the harder the AOA onsets. So see, there you go. Extending the fight, keeping me totally out of gun range, and I can't match your speed. Be a little bit more aggressive, start coming down on me. And try and get a lock on me, and try and get a shot off on me. I would try that if I wasn't already pulling 30 AOA by the time I even try and get over. What's that Tomcat doing? 
Alright, so good job staying fast. But do keep in mind that I can get fast, it just takes me a while to get there. Good job, good job. Keeping me off your six. Now, what if I told you I blacked out? Well, that wouldn't be good, would it? <laughs> well, I did, unfortunately. Okay. So let's That'd go be ahead. Funny, huh? <laughs> so you did a blackout? Uh, maybe. All right, let's go ahead and reset. I think the hardest part for me yep. is just trying to figure out how to make someone overshoot me without pulling so much away that I start uh vaping. Yeah, so um one one thing to keep in mind here is that AOA is just the incidence of the airflow over the wing. Um and G's oh, is sorry. what is what you're pulling. Um keep it try to um Instead of relying on the AOA um, slider that's on the left-hand side of the cock of the uh, instrument panel there, uh, underneath the gun okay. sight, is try to um, instead focus on the cues the aircraft is giving you, the sound of the aircraft, the buffet of the airframe, that kind of stuff. So that way you don't have to take your attention off the fight and look at the AOA indexer. All you need to do is simply know, okay, I'm at too, I'm pulling too many Gs. I'm at too high of an AOA. I better not pull any more. Or, you know, okay, I know I'm pulling back on the stick. I'm, I know I'm getting some buffet, which means to roll this airplane the way I need to, I'm going to have to put in a full rudder deflection, something like that. Also keep in mind and try to recognize the air speeds at which you can make full stick and rudder deflections without breaking the jet. So the faster you go, the smaller the inputs you, you have to use because if you use full rudder deflection or full stick deflection at 500 knots, you may end up breaking the jet. But down at um, 300, you know, 250 knots, you can make those full rudder and stick deflections and to move the jet around the way you need to to get out of a bad situation. So that's something to really recognize as well. But try and recognize when, when you're at those points without having to look down into the cockpit. So that kind of separates the men with the boys with the Tomcat is instead of looking down into the cockpit all the time to see where you are, to know how you can maneuver, it's a matter of feeling the jet and knowing where you are in the flight envelope to be able to just make that maneuver, um, knowing instinctually where you are in the envelope. Okay. Just takes practice. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll go ahead and do that same thing. We'll make that 270 degree turn and uh, we'll come into the merge at a neutral. So, three, two, one, here we go. All right, turning. Same. A really, really good job with those um, vertical maneuvers. Just don't uh, get too slow around me. Because if you get too slow, that's when I'm going to eat you up. Right. Coming into the merge now. All right, level. And fights on.
Nice, you probably got a snapshot off there. I did too. That would have been. Yep. Those head-on shots, though, don't count. Right. Ooh, there he is. He's coming in on my six. Nice job. All right. So pull hard, pull hard. Try to get a gunshot off on me. And then if you miss the opportunity, extend away. Don't get slow with me. Nice job. Extend, 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 extend. Get away. Good job, good job. Now I can't come around and bag you. All right, reset the fight. Go vertical once you have enough energy. All right, I'm a I'm a ballsy hornet driver, so I'm coming up to meet you. Oh, put me right on your six. All right. Extend, 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 get fast. That didn't work, so get fast, get fast. Don't let me on your six. Outrun me. Do what you need to do. Good job, good job. Yep, good job, good job. Good job. See, when you do that, there's no way I can get into gun range and kill you. It's just an impossibility in the Hornet versus Tomcat arena. So if you stay fast and vertical, it just, it just, that's, that's how it works, right? Now, you just have to be very, very careful when you do go into that vertical and you're pulling up over the top, because last time you pulled it a little bit too um, tight and I was able to get onto your six, but you still were able to use that potential energy to convert it into kinetic energy and get away from me. So good job on that, really good job. So you're starting to get the feel now that you can stay away from a Hornet as much as you can want in the Tomcat. Good job. Yes, but the thing is, how do I turn that neutral stance into an offensive stance without, you know, Ending up bleeding too much energy or... So one thing you can do is if you see an opportunity, um, what you can do is come on down to me, um, you know, come down with lots of energy and make what's called a slashing attack. So you come down through my, my plane, boom and zoom, exactly. Um, just like a World War II, you know, World War II American fighters would do against Japanese zeros, right? And then... Another thing you can do if you feel comfortable with it and you feel like, okay, I've got the opportunity to make this work, is you can um, you make, make a single turn with me, okay? So you feel like, okay, I've got a good angle here. I can make a, a quick turn with this Hornet. And then um, if I miss the, if I kill him, fantastic. If I miss the opportunity, no problem. I'll disengage from that turn. Um, and then go on out and, tr and reset the fight and try it again. And just continue on and on and on until you can either kill the bandit or he runs out of gas because the horn is going to run, run out of gas before you. Um, All right. Um, question. Do you have yep. any tips for trying to come over the top fast without, you know, so doing you're, upside it, down? It's really, really a matter of... Um, practicing it because it's all about modulating your stick pull to make sure that you don't get too slow because you don't want to be pulling too many G's over the top and get too high of an AOA because then you'll bleed even more energy than just simply going vertical. Um, and then it's all about making sure that you don't pull too hard when you're coming down so that way you can regain that lost energy as quickly and efficiently as possible. So it's all about practice. It's just practice, practice, practice. Instead of for your practice, I think instead of just flying against the AI or flying against somebody else, 
go ahead and spawn at an airfield and fly an air show. So that way you can take your time and feel how the aircraft reacts at different points in the flight envelope. So let's go ahead and continue. Three, two, one. All right, good job, man. So I know that you're worried about turning this into an offensive action, but when you're flying against a guy who's trying to kill you, he might get buck fever too in the Hornet, and he might make a mistake as much as you can make a mistake. So it's all about being patient and waiting for him to make a mistake, just like he's waiting for you to make a mistake. There you go. See? Turn with me once. If you get a shot, awesome. If you can't, go away. But good job. That looked really good. It looked like maybe you could have gotten a shot off on me. I was almost there, but then I noticed I was already trying to drop past 300 and I was like, I probably should just extend. Yeah, so, um, keep in mind the angles here. So a Hornet can turn pretty damn quickly, but I can't turn like a UFO, right? So if I have, if the angles are correct, maybe you can pull a little bit harder to get that shot. And then because I'm facing 180 degrees opposite, you can just extend that way and uh, get away from me that way. Right. So it's definitely an interesting dynamic flying against a Hornet, that's for sure so but this dude uh legend he's been like religiously dogfighting in the hornet so he actually knows what he's doing yeah for sure so i've been practicing against him for a day yep a lot of guys though that fly in the Hornet and dogfight, they subscribe to the new school of dogfighting tactics, which is slow speed, nose point ability, which I subscribe to the old school dogfighting tactics, which I think works better uh, in terms of real world combat. The Hornets and right. Su-30s and F-22s can do with their slow speed, nose point ability is great for a one-on-one -on -one knife fight and it's great for air shows, but in real combat, not such a great idea. Like the super maneuverability. How yep. it looks cool at doing things. That looks like it can be useful, but probably isn't. Um, that doesn't look good. Yep, I've got, I think I've got you. Not if I do this, uh, you'll lose me if I pop out flares. <laughs> you try. Now watch out, watch for the ground. Watch the ground, good job. Watch the ground. Oh, oh you broke the wings off. Didn't expect that. So, yeah, you had me. You could have gotten away. Um, because the FCS was not allowing me. Yep. The FCS was not allowing me to follow you and pursue you the way I would have wanted to, so I would have hit, had to hit the G override switch. 